All right, hello everyone. Math lesson, May 4th, 2020. We're gonna start with our fluency. All right, so first one, number one, find the difference between 76 and 94 hundredths and 11 and 876 ten thousandths. All right, so we are going to find the difference. Remember, difference means subtraction. So we are going to subtract. Let's do 76. And 94 hundredths, 76.94 minus, remember, when you're subtracting decimals, you must line up the decimals. So 11.08876. All right, let's put um, placeholder zeros up here. Now, when we subtract, zero minus six, you cannot do, so we need to borrow. Oh, we can't borrow here, we need to borrow again. This four becomes a three to make this zero a 10. Now we can borrow from this 10 to make it a nine, to make this a 10. 10 minus six is going to be four. Nine minus seven is gonna be two. Three minus eight, oh, we can't do that. So this nine becomes an eight. So the three becomes a 13. I'm gonna write it up there, sorry. Um, 13 minus eight is gonna be five. 8 minus 0 is going to be 8. Drop your decimal. 6 minus 1 is 5. 7 minus 1 is 6. So our answer is 65 and 8,524 ten thousandths. That's how we say our decimal here. So 65.8524. All right, we're going to move on to number 2. Number two here says, what is the sum? Ooh, we know what sum means. Sum means add, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, of 13 and 51 hundredths, seven and two tenths, and 23. So remember, when we're adding, we need to line up our decimals. So I'm gonna put 13.51, seven point two, line up that decimal, and 23, 23 is a whole number. So we can put our placeholder zeros. We can also put a placeholder zero there. We are adding, we're finding the sum. One plus zero plus zero is gonna be one. Five plus two plus zero is gonna be seven. Drop that decimal. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Um, one plus one is two plus another two. You can put a placeholder zero here if you want to. One plus one is two, plus two is gonna be four. So our answer is 43 and 71 hundredths, or 43.71. All right, moving right along, let's go to our DMR, Daily Math Review, number three. All right, so I'm gonna zoom out just a smidge. Number three here, Don wrote the expression eight less than the product of M and 10. So we're gonna, we're gonna figure out and write an algebraic expression. So there's not gonna be an equal sign, but we're gonna write an expression that he can write. So eight less than the product of M and 10. So first, what does the product of M and 10 mean? Well, product means multiply. So multiply M times 10, or you can also write that as 10 times M or 10 M. So that means 10 times M, or the same thing as M times 10. So that's the product of M and 10. But now we are going to have eight less than that. Eight less than that. So we're gonna take away eight. So minus eight. There we go. All we have to do is decode. Do not stress too much about this right now. We are going to keep doing more practice. Um, it'll become more familiar as you keep doing it. So we have 10 M, or 10 times M, minus eight. So we're gonna use this expression now that we wrote to determine the value of the expression for when m equals seven. So what we're gonna do is if m equals seven here, we are going to replace this m with a seven. So we're going to have, I'll write the expression first, 10m minus eight. Well, if we're gonna replace that m with a seven, we're gonna pile up that seven in for that m. So we're gonna have 10, times whatever m is, which is gonna be seven, and then subtract eight. Now, order of operations, remember, PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Do we have any parentheses? Yes, but inside the parentheses, is that solved? Yes, so now we're going to go to exponents. No exponents, 
multiplication and or division? Yes, we have multiplication. 10 times 7 is going to be 70. Bring everything else down we didn't use. Now we're only down to one problem. So 70 minus 8 is going to be 62. Can you see that? Perfect. So our answer here is 62. So in your answer document, you can write it um, whichever way you want. 10 m minus 8 and then you can get 62 or you can put 62. That is fine as well. All right, let's look at number four. Oh, also remember, you can rewind, you can um, pause it, whatever you need to do to help you. All right, we're going to write an equation. Ooh, equation means it's going to have an equal sign for the given statement. So we're gonna use N as the variable. Remember the variable is a letter. So I'm gonna write that up here. Variable is a letter. An equation has an equal sign. All right, so there's our little notes for us. So it says 12 more than a number is 35. So 12 more than a number is 35. In this case, something is going to equal 35. So is is gonna be our equal sign. So is or equals 35. So something equals 35, something is 35. Well, the beginning says 12 more than a number. Well, we're gonna use N as that number. So something more than a number, so we're gonna have N more than, 12 more than that, we're gonna add 12. In this case, you can also write um, 12 plus n equals 35. 12 and then you can add a number, but technically it would be 12 more than whatever this number n is. Um, so those are two ways that you can write it because when you're um, multiplying and uh, um, adding, you can write them in whichever order you would like. All right, so we're going to, and that's only for multiplication and addition. We're gonna use the equation that we wrote to solve for n. So what plus 12 equals 35? Hmm. Well, let's use blue. If we have 12, uh, n plus 12 equals 35, let's put our imaginary line here. Now, we need to get n by itself. So we need to do the inverse operation or the opposite of adding 12. Hmm, what's the opposite of adding 12? Oh, subtracting 12. So we're gonna take away 12 from both sides. So positive 12 and negative 12 are zero and they cancel out. So we have N left on this side. We're gonna keep our equal sign. Um, and five minus two is going to be three. Three minus one is gonna be two. So N is going to equal 23. Now, um, you can also check it if you put 23 plus um, 12, 23 and 12, you get 3, 4, 5, 2, 3, you get 35. Perfect. So 23 is that number plus 12 is 35 or equals 35. All right, we're going to look at number five. So number five says, which two numbers are 11 and a half or 11.5 units away from zero on a number line? Well, if you have a number line and we have zero and we have 11 and a half units away from that zero, well, there's two ways we can go on a number line. Ding, ding, ding. We can go in the positive direction and get to positive 11.5 or we can go to the, in the negative direction and get negative 11.5. So two numbers that are um, both 11 and a half units away from zero on a number line is going to be 11 Point five and negative eleven point five. Woohoo! All right, we made it through our fluency and DMR. Let's go ahead to our air practice review. All right, number six. Let me zoom in a little bit there. There we go. Um, several friends met at an ice cream parlor. They order five ice cream cones and three sundaes, and they pay a total of twenty-seven dollars and thirty cents. The ice cream cones cost a total of $14.25. What is the cost of one Sunday? Well, in this case, we need to decode this. So if we have, we need to get from one Sunday, we need to get one Sunday. So first of all, they order five ice cream cones and three Sundays. 
They say the five ice cream cones, so ice cream cones cost a total of $14.25, and their total was $27.30. We can take away those ice cream cones, so we can subtract $27.30, and we're going to take away the uh, ice cream cones, $14.25. Remember, when you're adding or subtracting decimals, you need to line them up. Zero minus five, we cannot do. Um, so the three becomes a two. Zero becomes a 10. 10 minus five is five. Two minus two is zero. Drop your decimal. Seven minus four is three. Two minus one is one. So $13.05 is what the, it costs for three Sundays. So three Sundays. We are going to divide this total divided by three to make it for one Sunday. So we're gonna put the money on top. This is our money, $13.05. And we're gonna divide it by three. So I'm gonna put 13.05 divided by three. Now, when you have a decimal point here, there's no decimal on the outside so of the house. So that means we're good and we can plop, we can pop up our decimal from on the inside of the house. So we're gonna pop it up when you're dividing. Now, um, how many times can three go into one? It cannot. So how many times can three go into 13 fully? So I know three times four is 12, so it can go in four times. So three times four is 12. I'm gonna put that four above the three. It helps a lot when you line up your numbers, just a reminder to keep it organized. Um, three. Now we're gonna subtract. Three minus two is gonna be one. One minus one is zero. Now we get to bring down our zero. Woohoo! All right, how many times can three go into 10? Well, it can go in three times evenly. Um, three times three, well, not evenly, but um, fully, I apologize. Three times three is gonna be nine. We're going to subtract 10 minus nine, or um, a lot of times I'll see people want to do, oh, that's, um, we're gonna have 10 here. 10 minus nine, oh, one, and then one again. No, because remember, this zero, we can't do zero minus nine. The one becomes a zero to make this a 10. So now 10 minus nine is gonna be one. Now we can bring down our five. How many times can three go into 15? Woohoo! Three can go into 15 five times. Three times five is 15. 15 minus 15 is zero. There are no other, put, um, no other numbers we need to bring down. There are no remainders, so our answer is $4.35 um, for one Sunday. So $4.35. You can put that in your answer document. All right, again, you can rewind it. You can um, pause it, whatever you need to do to help you. All right, let's go to number seven. Which of these statements, A, B, C, or D, describes a unit rate? A unit rate is when it's going to be compared to one. So it's gonna be maybe X over one, something where it's compared to one. Alex eats three apples. Mm, it's not comparing something to one. It's not comparing anything. It's just telling us Alex eats three apples. Well, great for you, Alex. All right, Kyle runs three miles over two days. So three miles over two days. Three miles, two days, is that comparing to one? Nope. Zach reads three pages of his book per minute. So per minute means per one minute. So three pages for every one minute. Ooh, woohoo! That's it, our answer is C. Um, let's double check. Michael adds three cups of sugar for every two cups of flour. Three to two, nope. So our answer is indeed C. All right, you are doing very, very well. I'm very proud of you all. We are going to move on to number eight, our final one for this lesson. Let me fit that on the page there. Uh, I'm gonna keep it kind of like that for a moment. All right, now a cell phone plan offers 250 minutes each month for $15 per month. So if you have a cell phone, this is back in the olden days. I know, I know, and actually not too long ago. <laughs> there, um, 250 minutes and it costs $15 for a month. So pay 15 bucks and you can talk 250 minutes on the phone. I know all of you probably talk more on the phone and you FaceTime and whatnot. So maybe this plan would not be good. You'd probably need more. 
what is the cost per minute? So when you're finding a unit rate, something per minute, per one, we're gonna put the money on top. Woohoo! So money on top, we're gonna get it for one minute. $15 money on top divided by how many minutes are they giving you? 250. Now, this fraction here means, it literally means divide. Come on, you guys, you can do it. So we're literally gonna divide here. Um, 15 um, dollars, we're gonna divide it by 250. Now, there are no decimals on the outside of the house, so that means we can bring up our decimal on the inside. Alrighty, now, um, can 250 go into 15? No, so it's gonna be zero dollars and something cents. So right away, if you want to, we can look at that. That's $16 and $3. We're already at zero dollars. So we can get rid of those right away if you would like to do process of elimination. Now let's go forward and continue to check through our work while we're going. All right, so 250, can 250 go into 150? No, so that would be a zero here. It can't go in there. So already it's gonna be zero dollars and something cents. So look at this, zero dollars and 60 cents. Well, the six is in the tenths place. There's a zero in the tenths place, so that's not gonna be it. So using process of elimination, we can look that our answer is A. Now, if it does not have answers like this, we can go forward. We can see how many times 250 can go in to 1,500 to get all of that. Well, we have a cheat sheet over here as well to check. Um, this is saying it will go in six times. So if the answer, if it goes in six times, then that answer will be correct. So let's check it out. Oh, I could do it down here. Okay, so I'm gonna do 250 times six to see if that's if we get 1,500. Six times zero is zero. Six times five is 30. Six times two is gonna be 12 plus three is 15. No decimals, woohoo! 250 goes into 1,500 six times. So would you look at that? Our answer is zero dollars and six cents. So here is our answer, it's going to be A. So you will pay six cents for each minute on the phone. Whoa, let's get a different plan. They now have unlimited, just so you know. All right, have a wonderful day, everybody. I miss you all.